Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and here's a headline from a well-known mainstream media outlet, The Motley Fool. Ripple, three reasons why XRP is a top cryptocurrency to buy now. And they actually do state, and th this is a quote from the article, that XRP is, quote, one of the most important cryptocurrencies ever created, end quote. And people are indeed buying a ton of XRP. Transactions have been doing nothing but trend up for the entirety of the existence of the XRP ledger. In fact, I'm going to show you a chart a little bit later on. And so uh, he here's the deal. Um, I've actually got a number of critiques with this article, which usually isn't the case when somebody's writing an article that is pro Ripple and or pro XRP. And so I, I appreciate the positivity here, but there are a number of inaccuracies and the author displays a complete misunderstanding of what is driving price action within crypto markets. So I'm not going to be overly harsh here, but I feel compelled to set the record straight. So I'll highlight that. Uh, there's also two additional stories. Um, one of Ripple's attorneys, specifically Chris Larson's attorneys, uh, has, uh, has exited stage left, will no longer be a part of the lawsuit. So there's a quick update on that. And there's also this headline from you today. Jim Cramer has major warning for Dogecoin buyers, and attorney John Deaton had to say something about this because it actually has to do with securities law, and given that attorney John Deaton is well-versed on the topic at this point in the world of crypto with the SEC versus Ripple case and uh, Ethereum and uh, <laughs> you, what you all know, uh, it was an interesting perspective here. But uh, before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun, damn it. So let's go ahead and dive into this first piece, which is definitely well-intentioned, but mostly, or in a large way at least, wrong. The more you research cryptocurrencies, the more you'll find projects working to solve unique problems. And the more important the issue that a cryptocurrency can solve, the more potential it has to grow in price for years. That's why XRP, which was created by Ripple, is one of the top cryptocurrencies to buy now. Okay, pause. XRP, obviously, and I'm sure about 100% of you listening at this point understand this, XRP was not created by Ripple here. But um, I, I can appreciate also a, a recognition that at some point utility is actually functionally going to matter. Real world usage, usage of any cryptocurrency is going to be required in order for there to be long term viability. Uh, but that's not the world that we live in now. That's most certainly not true. And um, as, as far as who created it, uh, nah, it wasn't, wasn't Ripple. In fact, take a look at this. This is from XRPL.org. XRP Ledger's origin. And here's the headline. Provide a better alternative to Bitcoin. And so this goes to the purpose, and they, they end up talking about this a little bit later in that Motley Fool article, so let's just cover this now, though. In 2011, three engineers, David Schwartz, Jed McCaleb, and Arthur Brito, began developing the XRP ledger. Fascinated by Bitcoin, they set out to create a better version that improved upon its limitations with the goal of creating a digital asset that was more sustainable and built specifically for payments. So to be crystal clear here, uh, there are three people that created uh, XRP and the XRP ledger. This is before Ripple existed, and they didn't know what XRP was going to be used for. They were seeking to build a better Bitcoin. David Schwartz has also publicly spoken about this, and he said, uh, we didn't really know for sure what XRP was going to use for. We just had some sort of loose idea that it would somehow be used in conjunction with payments, just generally speaking. Speaking. But uh, as far as the idea of it being positioned as a bridge currency the way it is today, no, that that hadn't even that idea had not yet been conceived uh, when uh, when XRP and the XRP ledger were created. Uh, so anyway, peace continues here, though. With more than 16,000 coins or tokens in existence, there are certainly a lot of copycat tokens and projects competing with each other to solve the same problem. Ripple, though, is in a league of its own and could be one of the most important cryptocurrencies ever created. Pause. Uh, okay, I agree with that. I, I, I do agree with that, actually. <laughs> um, because here's, here's the deal. 
w- once this asset class is sufficiently matured, like I just said, utility matters and will win the day. That will be the most important thing. XRP is one of the only cryptocurrencies that's actually doing anything, and it actually doesn't have just one use case. It has multiple use cases, uh, and that's thanks to multiple developers building on top of the XRP ledger. So yeah, as far as being one of the most important cryptocurrencies ever, well, it already is. It, it easily, arguably, is today. But I'm more curious about what's going to be one of the, the which cryptocurrencies will be the most important cryptocurrencies in a world where this asset class is sufficiently mature. Because and you better figure it out now, though, because by the time it's sufficiently mature, there's not going to be as much opportunity in terms of, uh, in, in, you know, investment returns. Because right now in crypto, since there's so little money in this, and it's, uh, it's so highly speculative. Uh, you get asymmetrical returns relative to any other asset or asset class, but that's not always going to be the case here. So figuring this out now is the time to figure it out, figuring out the crypto space, just generally speaking here. So yeah, by the time we know that it is the most important, the opportunity in terms of monetary returns, it's going to be mostly gone. In fact, the volatility I anticipate will be uh, just as little as you'd expect with precious metals, frankly, or maybe the stock market. Um, Anyway, Peace continues here, though. Um, wait, where did I go? Oh, yeah, here we go. But before we get into the three reasons why XRP is a top cryptocurrency to buy now, it's important to understand why it was created. And this is where he gets something wrong again. Well-intentioned, but not exactly leading his followers in the right direction. <laughs> this guy wrote the following. First off, Ripple and XRP are generally used interchangeably, but they aren't the same thing. Okay, okay I'll give him props for that part. Uh, Ripple Labs is a company, and it has created both XRP, the cryptocurrency, and the Ripple Network, a blockchain-based digital payment payment network for financial transactions. And again, I already corrected that. They did, (laughs) the people at Ripple did not create XRP because Ripple didn't exist until after XRP was created. But anyway, the network was created initially to allow large banks and other financial institutions a simpler, faster, and cheaper way to send funds internationally. Nope, let me stop. Literally not true. As I cited a couple minutes ago, and that's the the reason that I covered it, uh, it, it was just to... Be a, it was designed just to be a better version of Bitcoin. That was literally it. The creators, including David Schwartz, and it might sound silly, they created this thing because they thought it was neat and they didn't know if or how it could ever be useful. Literally, that's true. They thought somehow with payments, payments, they thought, okay, technologically, and it's got the built-in decentralized exchange. It's blazing fast compared to Bitcoin. Huge step up. Uh, let's see if people end up uh, finding a way to use it. That, that's pretty much their starting point. That's the truth. And that might sound ridiculous, but... Uh, these are people that were enthusiasts in Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain. So it stands to reason that they you know, see what they could do to build a better version of it. And they sure as hell did. That's for damn sure. Anyway, um, and so the piece continues here. And they this is the first reason that they cite here. They got this little somebody. Ripple's target customer base could grow. When Ripple was created along with XRP, investors already knew it was a top cryptocurrency to buy given the problems it was trying to solve in international banking. Uh, No, it really wasn't clear back in the day, but okay. Uh, Right now, sending a wire transfer can be quite costly. In addition, it can take days for the money to be sent across the world. So the Ripple Network and XRP could easily solve a lot of those problems. True. That part's true. I just, I wonder if you could articulate how the plumbing works in any capacity. Could you explain like what the, what the flow looks like? How XRP would start in uh, in, in the uh, in a country, for instance, it could be the United States, and then it, you know United States dollars go to a cryptocurrency exchange in the United States, where XRP is automatically purchased using on-demand liquidity's efficient path-seeking algorithm. Then that XRP is shifted to the destination country. Let's just say it's Mexico. Maybe it's going to the Bitso cryptocurrency exchange, and then that XRP is sold in the Mexican peso. Could could he articulate that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of kind of curious there. Anyway, peace continues. But its potential goes far beyond massive banks. As it becomes more popular over the long haul, Ripple could also start appealing to smaller businesses as well, which would create massive growth potential. And so when I first read this article the other day, I'm sitting here like, and I'm still sitting here like it today, honestly. Like, what the hell does he mean by that? Ripple could also start appealing to smaller businesses as well. Like, what do you mean? They're, they're All they're doing right now is positioning XRP as a bridge currency. There are other developers, uh, you know, pushing for other use cases for, for businesses. Uh, when you say smaller businesses, do you mean smaller banks? Do you just mean 
uh, businesses in general? Because if you mean businesses in general, I'd say the smaller banks, in terms of utilizing XRP as a bridge currency, which is all they're doing right now, uh, that makes that makes little sense, to be honest with you. It, well, it, it, it doesn't make as much sense. I mean, if you're talking, it depends on what you mean by that, though. If you're talking about um, how XVIA was originally being positioned, uh, which is basically, uh, you know, just X, basically RippleNet, including on-demand liquidity for corporates. That's what XVIA was. I think it's all just been rolled into RippleNet at this point, but it was basically a focus on using the same technology, but for for. Uh, for corporates, just for businesses globally, because if you're a massive company and you've got you got to take care of payroll, but you've got locations the world over, if you're a large business, uh, you've got some serious issues moving money around the planet. If you're a small business, maybe you're just in one country, you probably don't. So I don't know how XRP specifically is going to, to benefit you. Now, if you're a bank and you're a small bank and you're talking about converting from one fiat currency to another, yeah, I'm all on board with that. But, um, you know... Th- like, that's a reality today. Like, small banks can already do that today if they want to. Like, on-demand liquidity is live. It's just a question of how many corridors are open, and at this point, it's uh, er- early days, so there are only so many corridors open, there's only so much liquidity, but from a technological perspective, that's already set up, so it just depends on what you mean by that. Uh, and then they write, XRP is already the eighth most valuable cryptocurrency, as investors are optimistic about its potential today, but if the cryptocurrency can realize this mainstream adaption they mean adaptation um it could have years of growth potential ahead of it yeah so let's talk about the growth here are the number of transactions dating back to january 21st 2013 so there you go nine years nine years of transactions here and uh you're just gonna have to look at your screen to see this I mean, it's been sloping upward for the entirety of its existence. The adoption is real, folks. This this thing, they're showing no sign. It's showing no signs of going away anytime soon. And this is so. This chart here again. It's number of transactions executed. It's massive. It's absolutely massive. You can see the trend up. It's just a, it's a nice, slow or even grind to the upside. And um, not surprising that you see during bear markets. Uh, that that's when it typically dips, but the trend is to the upside. There's real world utility and adoption taking place. It's it's definitely not going away. So like like the 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 concept behind the article, I actually completely agree with. It's just the rationale for it I take issue with, which is why I thought I'd have a little fun talking about this. And then their second reason, Ripple is constantly working to refine its product. A lot of other cryptocurrencies that were created weren't founded by a company. <laughs> this one wasn't either, uh, but rather by a few individuals. This. This was created by a few individuals, literally three. That's a few. (laughs) Anyway, and while these cryptocurrencies generally have a fund that continues to work on developing the technology, it's unlike Ripple, which has a team of over 500 employees to continue building and expanding its network. Uh, Folks, it's not as if it's uncommon to have developers building on top of blockchains with massive teams. How many people work at the Ethereum Foundation and or Consensus? Like like over a thousand people, I believe. I'm pretty sure I heard that number like a really long time ago. So it's, maybe it's way more than that at this point. It's it's not unheard of to have developers building on top of a blockchain with big ass teams. Actually, so he, I'm gl- I'm glad it's being acknowledged. But this is uh, it's it it's not the end all be all. I'm just saying. Anyway, they're right. This is a huge advantage, especially as Ripple and XRP start to become a lot more mainstream. It also means the company can send salespeople out to banks and other financial institutions to promote their technology and explain the advantages, which could be a major advantage in helping Ripple to grow. Another reason XRP is one of the best cryptocurrencies to buy now. See, you know, I'd, you know what I'd articulate it. I'd say multiple developers building on top of a blockchain, uh, that's, a, that's one indication of a healthy ecosystem. And we see that. And so, yes, Ripple's a player in this space, but they're pretending like Ripple is the end-all, be-all in terms of long-term viability of XRP. Folks, technologically, XRP is superior. It's the best cryptocurrency on the planet for payments, if you just consider all factors that matter in a general sense for payments, including liquidity, by the way, which is something that can't be programmed into the damn thing. And then the third reason, Ripple is expanding into central bank digital currencies. Uh, that's actually the most reasonable point that they brought up because Ripple's articulated that it's part of their goal. Um, they've created a, you know, a, 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 basically a template, an XRP private ledger. Uh, so it's, it's a template that's based on the XRP ledger, but it's for centralized entities, specifically central banks, that they can roll through on central bank digital currencies. 
And Ripple, they just acknowledge that central bank digital currencies are going to be here, uh, like it or not. It's not it, if. It's like, first of all, they're already here, just in, in limited supply. Um, I know the Bahamas was the first to launch one in October of 2020. I don't know how many, or if any, had been launched since then. Not not many, obviously, and not by major nations, at least to this point. We know China's working on it, but anyway. Uh, it's coming, though. And so these, these, these blockchains, they're not going to... Uh, just naturally be interoperable. That's just not how it works. You know, whatever your platform is, you're not going to have a pair. Imagine if you're on a cryptocurrency exchange, the same thing if you're not going to have a pair for every single uh, asset on the planet that exists. Like, that's just not how things work. Can you imagine everything that's tokenized on every platform the world over having sufficient liquidity to have everything? No, you're not going to have that. And so that's why you, if you have a cryptocurrency that happens to be widely adopted globally, then you can, if you so choose, uh, position it as a bridge currency. And that's what Ripple's doing. And there's no counterparty risk. It's just a decentralized cryptocurrency that has an open market price. And that's it. And so that this part's actually the most reasonable response. And yes, Ripple is positioning XRP to be used as a bridge currency between central bank digital currencies. And it sounds like a pretty damn good plan as far as I'm concerned. Um, now, into the next story. One of Ripple's, uh, Chris Larson's attorneys withdraws from defense. Here's why. And I'll be brief with this because it's not a major thing, but I wanted to at least mention it. Uh, prominent corporate lawyer James K. Filan has taken to Twitter to announce that one of the lawyers who has been defending former Ripple CEO Chris Larson in the SEC vs. Ripple Labs case is withdrawing. Attorney Robin A. Linsenmeyer seeks formal permission to withdraw from the legal case in which she and several other lawyers are building up the defense for Ripple co-founder and its former chief executive Chris Larson. As a reason for resignation, Linson Meyer stated that she is leaving the employment of the law firm Paul Weiss uh, hired by Ripple Labs to defend the company and Larson along with CEO Bradley Garlinghouse in court against the U.S. Securities Agency. So anyway, I just wanted to acknowledge it just briefly. There's really nothing else to say about it. It's just the attorney is, uh, maybe, who knows the reason? Maybe they got a better job opportunity. That stuff happens all the damn time. So there it is. It's not some sort of bad, terrible thing. Uh, then the final story here, and this is interesting, <laughs> especially since John Deaton jumped into this. Uh, Jim Cramer has major warning for Dogecoin buyers. Woof. Popular stock picker Jim Cramer has issued a stark warning about Dogecoin in his recent tweet, claiming that the biggest meme coin is an unregistered security. And here's the actual tweet from Jim Cramer just yesterday. Please be careful with Dogecoin. It is a security. It will be regulated. <clears throat> We will find out how many there are and how many are being created each day to make money for the exchanges. <laughs> and that is a not so intelligent tweet for so many reasons. Let's talk about it. Let me go through this article a little further. Uh, Kramer seems to suggest that the only purpose of meme coins is to make money for cryptocurrency exchanges. The CNBC star urged his followers to exercise caution when dealing with the K9 cryptocurrency. In response, and I love this, this is actually kind of fun, uh, Dogecoin co-founder Billy Marcus advised Kramer to learn more about blockchain, asserting that Dogecoin doesn't qualify uh, under the uh, the Howey test since it's a proof-of-work cryptocurrency that's similar to Bitcoin. And so he, here's the actual tweets. I've got them on the screen here. This is this is the guy we're talking about here. He's got one million followers. So he, re he responded to Jim Kramer and wrote, Bro, please learn how blockchain works. It's already well known how many there are and how many are created every day. It is in the public code on the public blockchain, easily viewable by anyone. Let me just pause. This is true. <laughs> Why do people have solid opinions on topics for which they know Look, very little. I don't understand. Like when I don't know a ton about a topic, I'll say I, I suspect so and so or I think so and so may be the case so that at least I can engage in conversation. But I'm not going to come out and make a bold claim uh, to, in Jim Cramer's case, 1.7 million followers just misleading all of those people, all those people that respect and value his opinion and follow him. He's absolutely misleading them and, and sharing untruths. 
So I am not claiming that he's doing it intentionally, but he has jumped the gun. This is not the way that adults should behave. And then uh, the Dogecoin co-creator Shibatoshi Nakamoto, Billy Marcus here, continues and he wrote, in terms of security, it, so he's referencing whether or not the asset is or is not a security. In terms of security, it is a proof of work cryptocurrency, so you have to put in work to retrieve the coins from the block. It doesn't qualify under the Howey test. It works the same as Bitcoin. In fact, it's 99.5% the same code as Bitcoin. Please educate yourself. And this is, this is all true. These are just factual statements here. And so uh, attorney John Deaton jumped in at this point, and, um, and he wrote the following on this topic. I've liked Jim Cramer for years, but Jimmy... You sold Bitcoin and bought Ethereum, but claim Dogecoin is a security. And then in parentheses, John Deaton writes, it's not. And then he continues. Uh, so again, you claim Dogecoin is a security while holding Ethereum, which is a much more likely, much more likely to be determined a security before Dogecoin. And then he's got a facepalm emoji and wrote, maybe crypto isn't your thing. Disclaimer, I own Bitcoin and Ethereum, no Doge. And that's how we wrapped up the tweet, by stating that he uh, owns Bitcoin and Ethereum, but he does not own Doge. Um, I also own Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I do not own Doge, and I never have. Nothing against it, I just happen to not own it. There are over 16,000 cryptocurrencies in existence. I cannot and will not own all of them. Doge is one that I happen to not own. Nothing against anybody that is listening that owns it. Um, it's a silly coin that, as far as I know, doesn't have any actual utility. But, hey, it is what it is. I own a bunch of coins that I think are going to go to zero if you fast forward a decade, so it doesn't really matter, okay? I'm not judging you, <laughs> and I'm really not. Um, but look here. John Dean makes such a brilliant point here. It's just like, and so, and I covered this too, is however many months ago, um, he was advising people sell their crypto, including Bitcoin, and then it rallied and hit another all-time high. And I was sitting there like, my gosh, what the hell? Can, so price go down and you, you advise your, your followers to panic? So like, do you know anything about the history of price action in the world of crypto? I just I was just like flabbergasted. It didn't make any damn sense here. And so think about this. He, he, he sold Bitcoin. He bought a ton of Ethereum, which is at serious risk of uh, the SEC going after it. Look, I made a video about this. In fact, some of you may have caught it. Uh, somebody at uh, the law firm Anderson Kill, I believe his name's, her name's Haley, uh, Haley Lennon. I could be mistaken. I think that's her name. Uh, she's somewhat well known in the world of crypto in certain circles, at least. And so she's an attorney at Anderson Kill. And uh, she, she just publicly stated, hey, hearing rumblings, it's all through the grapevine. Looks like the SEC really might be coming after Ethereum, claiming that uh, Ether actually is a security after all these years. And so it's just so funny to think that he sold Bitcoin, panic sold it, bought Ethereum, which actually, at least at some, even if you don't think it's an Ethereum, is a security now, it certainly was in the past at the bare minimum. And certainly there's a, a risk that the SEC could come after him. So he bought, <laughs> sold Bitcoin, then, then, uh, then, then FOMO'd into Ethereum, which is uh, under a microscope from the SEC. And then he's claiming that Dogecoin is a security when really it pretty damn clearly is not right i i mean i i think john deaton's kind of hitting the nail on the head here so <sighs> people are ridiculous man like it's it's weird living in the crypto space and just observing how human it's like p people watching from afar like over the internet it's enjoyable but sometimes just like damn what, what it is these fools be thinking you know I'll wrap up there, though. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.